Lindsay Phillips is here in the house and it's a good day. It's a good day. How are you? Thank you for coming here. Thanks so much. Thanks for having me. I didn't have to go anywhere. I'm you just did. in my bedroom. You're just in your bedroom. And can I tell you what else you just are? You're just so damn down to earth that it's it's like, you're so pretty that people are like, I'd love to hate her, but I can't because she's really nice and oh, cool. I'm okay so you're on real, all fronts. Everybody wants to be your friend. <laughs> everybody wants to be your friend because you keep it so real. You're like, how's it going? And people don't feel like, oh, well, she's perfect. Like you are just so yourself. I love that about you. And I love Thanks. that- I love that you reach out to, to the humans of the world and say, Hey, like, it's not look at me, but come with me. Let's do things. Let's talk. Let's be real. Well, um, yeah, I appreciate that. That's a really nice compliment. Well, it's also just like true. So we're going to talk about your podcast in a moment. Um, but I feel like it would be fun to take a little bit of a walk down, down the journey together of like, why how the we? hell, why wouldn't we? It just, You've only told the story 17,000 times. Um, and then we're for sure going to talk about the TV show because I can't even stand it. I, I, it's, it, when I saw that it was coming and then I saw it, I was like, this is my dream that they would make this show. So then it was yeah. made. Yeah, Same. someone heard my prayer. Same. Um, so can you tell us how you got into this thing called being an actress? For sure. Uh, I felt unseen in my home <laughs> same in my childhood home no i actually have a fairly good you know like i have great parents but um but yeah i did have like a i had the hole the hole that a lot of performers have um and a deep deep desire to be seen and uh and i always and i had that thing that kids often have. And once you become a parent, I am a parent and I have children and you see it and you see it in other people's kids sometimes. And then you see, because what's interesting is like, for me, it's just the way that I always was, but that's not the way all kids are. And it's not the way all people totally. are, that's you know? True. Um, and so I read, I wrote about it in my book a little bit. Like I call it sparkly humans and like sparkly humans don't <laughs> necessarily end up in entertainment or even a creative pursuit, but they're just people who kind of like, just kind of demand the room, you know? And, uh, and I did theater and stuff when I was little in school and summer camps and those kinds of things, not sleep away summer camp. I was never, I could never sleep over at a camp when I was a kid. No way. I love that you but, made the time to make sure we understood that. You're like not just, that. You know, I wasn't, I wasn't like a kid being shipped off for six weeks in the summer. You know what I mean? I was like definitely going to my day camps and then my mom would, you know, stop showing houses and come pick me up and take me home. Mm -hmm. Anyway, um, I just knew from a very young age that it was what I wanted to do when I grew up and like a lot of kids, you know, and I, because I grew up in Arizona and Scottsdale, I feel like the proximity to Los yeah. Angeles and to Hollywood was fairly close. Like I, I kind of like got it, but like I had, there were a few kids that I knew in childhood and like teen years that had agents and stuff in, in LA and right. would like fly over for special right. auditions and stuff. Right. Hollywood adjacent. It was there. It was Hollywood adjacent ish, yeah. ish kind of, but you know, I just like, I also just really wanted to be good at it. And I thought I was going to be a very serious actor and, uh, <laughs> I, but I, I auditioned, I, I knew I wanted to go to LA for school because New York seemed too far. It was for me at the time. I, remember, I can't even go to camp. You know what I mean? So I will never I, forget it. I remember. Okay. okay. okay good. Yeah. So, uh, so I wanted to go to LA and I was just like ready to start working immediately. I wanted to start working when I was like a kid and my mother was like, Desi, that's a full-time job for those parents. No, I'm no, I've got my real estate. You can do theater. Um, and so I like towards the end of my high school years in Scottsdale, I kind of like got a local, 
manager type lady that was sending me out on just very strange, small local jobs, none of which I really got. I mean, I was cast in a commercial, a local commercial when I was a senior in high school that was very big. Like it was a really big deal in Arizona because it played all the time. Um, but it was just an open casting call that I went to with all my friends. And what was uh, it for? It was an anti-smoking commercial. It was like Look from the you. Arizona Department of Health. Look at you doing good yeah. for society. Well, I mean, of course I was like a teenager who smoked, but um, I was a I, theater yeah. kid. What do you, you know? Um, I figured and, as much. Yeah. And uh, so I auditioned for CalArts and I got into CalArts and I also applied to Loyola Marymount University um, and got in there. But when I was sort of deciding where I wanted to go to school, I read the policy at CalArts, which is that when you're in the conservatory there, you're not allowed to audition or work professionally. And I was like, oh, dude, I'm already ready. Like, I need to go. So I <laughs> went to LMU and, um, and a woman who I had like worked with in this industrial trade job in Arizona, um, her name's Lisa Guerrero. She is now, I think she does still does like sports reporting mostly. Like she sometimes still acts, but she introduced me to her manager who's, who was like, let's try this. I want to try to work with you. I was like 18. And then I auditioned for a small agency. She got me, I met with a bigger agency and I like thought it was all going to happen. And then like the agent that I had met with left. <laughs> It doesn't, and so then she took me into a smaller agency that's still around called SMS. And uh, they asked me to come back and audition. And I went in and did like two scenes for them and they decided to rep me. And then I got Freaks and Geeks. I mean, it's like insane. It's insane. And it also, I'm pretty into recently in the last like few years I've gone on all these like Joe Dispenza retreats like pretty right. into that stuff and there's a little bit of that like quantum shift when someone because you just said it like five times you were like I'm not was ready and like let's do this it was kind of like I'm not trying to be an actor like mm -hmm. I am like let's yes. go like it was all in your energy your vibration was like it's already done so like what what is oh I was like long? waiting for everyone else to catch up I'm like right Right. What's happening? So that's really, I think, a very important piece of you. And that is why I said when you came on, there's something so real about you because it just is. You're not trying to impress anybody. You're there's nothing to prove. You're just like, hi, I'm here. And so are you. And like, we don't need to like do that exhausting thing where we try to do a thing to say a thing to impress. You're you have this energy of like, it's just what is like, since yeah. you told this story and that's just what you were doing. You were just going to do that thing. I feel like that, I mean, what you just said is essentially the secret to everything. It's the secret to, it's certainly the secret to being a human, like being able to really show up as yourself you have to fucking figure out what that is first though and i think that like sometimes you know it inherently and then sometimes people can lose the plot like i think i lost it for a minute i really do there was like i think i got really bogged down and mired in all the noise of the entertainment industry and what i was hearing what was being messaged to me and what i thought i needed to do differently in order to succeed and I just couldn't get out of my own way for year, I think several years in terms of that. And, and then I think once I kind of like returned to that thing of just being myself and like, huh, all right, if I'm not for you, I'm not for you. Bye. Uh, that's when I really feel like I've not only like done the best work, but just had the most fun and yeah. had the best response from people. And yeah. Yeah. You know. Let's talk about both of those things. Cause I want to talk about that, that moment, that breakthrough of like that liberation of 
Yeah. I'm done with that. But I want to go back because I'm curious if you could boil it down, all that stuff that you said you were mired in, uh-huh. what was the take home message that you felt? Was it you're to this or be more of this? Like, what was the main thing that you were coming up against that you, if there was one sort of message that you were hearing that you were letting sort of throw you off, what was it? Well, that's, but see, Kathy, that's the thing The in when you're pursuing anything, like, I mean, anything, the message changes. It's a shape shifter because Mm -hmm. the gatekeepers change, you know, every time. And so then you're like, okay, I'm not thin enough. Okay. I'm not, okay. I'm too loud. Okay. I don't have a big enough personality. Okay. Wait, my personality is too big. Okay. Wait, I need to be prettier and thinner and faster and funnier and slower. And like, you just get, uh, it becomes, you know, over the messages become overwhelming. The, the one thing I will say that was always consistent in being a woman working in Hollywood and like the time that I started out, I would say like nineties, late nineties, early two thousands, and and up was more just that like thank you so much the message that you're expendable that women specifically were expendable and not as valuable yikes as their male counterparts and not not as valuable in terms of how much how much you were going to get paid Mm -hmm. not as valuable in terms of your experience Mm -hmm. working with a male actor Mm -hmm. and what you know, their experience took, was, took precedent over yours, um, as did any like male director or male DP or male, any human on the set. And you were just like, you had to sort of watch it (laughs) because, you know, if you couldn't roll with it, like, forget it. There's a million girls that look just like you, honey, you're expendable. And that you're, and that there's only room for one. So like you're in constant, you, you know, you were in this constant state of competition with every other female actor around you, which early on, I rejected that part. I was like, well, that's just insane. Like, so I'm not going to be friends with yeah these, I don't get it. Like what? Yeah. It's and really, he, yeah. Go ahead. It was a, no, it was just, it was like, it was a lot of, it's a lot, it's a mind there's a lot that goes into, yeah. there's a lot that goes into upholding the systems yeah. that have been upheld for years and years and years and years. It's just really powerful and it's generous to talk about because what happens for us is we see it you know, we don't, we don't see the behind the scenes of any of this. So people love to just assume, and they have this story that like, she's lucky, she's lucky, she's lucky. When really what's happening is there are people who are, who are courageous enough to keep showing up while juggling a very like surreal environment. I mean, it's just not how most humans go through their life. Most humans like you might have a critical mother or like an aunt who says a few things to you and it's inappropriate and you like hate when she comes for Thanksgiving, but you like ignore her. Let's talk about that more. And then you go in your room and no, I'm just kidding. But you are there like doing your thing. It's a craft. You have to show up. And then there's just a tremendous amount that people don't get. And so instead of looking at you and saying like, well, she's just lucky and she just was given those looks and she's this. And it's like, it's really not like that. Like it's actually so, so not like that. And it takes. Right. And, but also Kathy fucking load on top. Sorry. I'm swearing on your podcast. You can believe it. Yeah. But load on top of that. I am an attractive white cisgender. Right. Great girl. Right. Okay. So So how much more so? Yeah. So I mean, so like, I know how like I felt and I already am like walking through the door with yep. all this privilege going for me in terms of sure. what sure. is, you know, yeah. being looked for. Yeah. So it's like, I can't even fucking imagine 
some, I mean, Renee Elise Goldsberry, who's on my show on uh, Girls 5 Eva, she's first of all, like the greatest human of all time. So infinitely talented in all ways. Um, and I, you know, and I just appreciate all of her work that she's done over the years, but really has, you know, she found work wherever she, she was on a soap opera and you see Hamilton and you're like, oh, that's a star who should have been starring winning Tonys from like the word jump, obviously the star of a television show, obviously, of course, of course but she's course. like, yeah, been out there working at any angle she can since, you know, the nineties as well. Mm -hmm. And just taking, you know, taking, that's the thing. Like we take the jobs, we take the jobs we get called in, you know, we get called in for, yeah. and then we can get. Yep. So then let's, let's fast forward to that, that place where you decided to liberate yourself from, from that. How did you, how did you even notice it? And then how did you get unstuck from that little chapter where you felt kind of caught in the weeds of it? Oh, I think it was like, it, it wasn't even something that was conscious. It was completely in on, uh, on an unconscious subconscious level. Um, but I was miserable. <laughs> so I was actually miserable. I was miserable in all ways. And I just was like, I don't like any of this. I don't like particularly like being a mom. I don't particularly like living this life. I don't like doing these jobs. Like, what is this? What am I doing? Mm -hmm. And it was like a real, I think that, you know, a lot of times I do hear women talk about how like their mid thirties, their late thirties, they have these moments of reckoning and I did, that is truly what I had. I think it was, you know, my mid thirties and Cougar Town was coming to an end. And I was like looking at the landscape of the, my career and feeling just like, kind of just like trapped. And, you know, when you feel trapped, it's because there's a lack of options and opportunity for you. But then you have to examine like, why is that? Why yeah, it's a do bad you... feeling. That's a hard, it's that's a, a tough word. Yeah. It's trapped. A, it is. Yeah. And then you have to like, if you, if you want to feel better, you have to look at like, well, why do I feel trapped? And what led me to this place? Mm -hmm. Oh, okay. Well, huh. That's interesting. I feel like, you know, this, I like painted myself a little bit into a corner in terms of um, not working on, I had had like a not working on writing and, and other creative outlets. And interestingly for me, like Instagram and Instagram stories became another, became another creative outlet for me. Yeah. And it became a place where I was like, getting super into building these little stories every day about my life. And I really loved it. And, and it was sort of through that process that I kind of rediscovered my own voice and that like, of course I can do anything I want. Like yeah. I, I that was the best. Be, yeah. Cause you went right to us. Like you went right to the people rather than like, Oh, I yeah. have to play this part. And this person has to give me permission to say a thing and stand a certain place. It was like, I have it. It's this. I'm just going to go put it out there. Let's talk about, because I don't know if everybody knows all the moments in your career, but mm -hmm. you had a show on E! And what I didn't know is that it was canceled the same day you were nominated for a Critics' Choice Award. What kind of mind F is that? That's insane. I mean, it felt at that point, it just was, it felt like, of course. Um, that entire experience was wild from start to finish <laughs> because I'd had this whole thing, you know, and I, this reckoning and I was like, you know, feeling like feeling yeah. so in myself and yeah. my creativity and, and what I wanted to do and the things and so clear about what I wanted to put into the world moving forward in a way that I had never been sort of critically thinking about before. Really, I was just like, who wants me? Where can I go? Where can I fit in? What I, what can I do? Who's going to pay me money? Like, I, you know, I was just always 
just in a constant panic. Panic. Why did I say it like that? I don't know. Paula Pell. That's like Paula Pell. Panic. <laughs> um, but I was just in a constant state of panic always about uh, getting jobs, acting jobs. And then, you know, here I have this like epiphany, this other, honestly, like revenue stream shows up that frees me from having to yeah. leave my children and move to another country or state to do oh my god a bad television show that's like written by two white dudes about a single woman like i just was so grateful for all of those things and then and then got you know had my book was kind of had written my book had spent the time writing my book while mark was directing i feel pretty with his partner abby and so, and I was in that movie, but like, really just because I was there, I mean, truly, like just, um, and, and then had the idea for the, for the talk show and started, you know, and it all came together so quickly and it was such a fun job. I mean, first of all, obviously I've been doing this long enough that I know what it's like to do press for shows. It's or movies or anything that you want people to see or watch or that you don't and you have to oh depress for it anyway. And I know how difficult it can be to get it up, to go to, to go beyond those shows, but it is, it is such a, it is such a part of it all, you know, and a part that you don't get paid for, which still is surprising, like still seems weird to me. That yeah, like, cause it's hours and hours and hours of your time. It's so wild. It's like included in the price of what we're going to pay you, which increasingly is going to be less and less as an actor. Um, as, unless you're like, you know, the star of the show making $30 million for the movie. Like you have to then take weeks of your life and go promote it. But that's just, that's a part of your, you've already been paid for them wow. to just do it. You know, wow. it's like really yep. kind of wild. Yeah. I've never considered that thought. That is crazy. I mean, it's, yeah, it's free labor. Yep. Here's what's wild, Kathy, is that because I do, <laughs> because I do so much stuff for Instagram now, you know, and like brands come to me or, you know, I get approached by all kinds of people to post about their stuff. Yeah, sure. Um, I've been approached by like different services, networks to pay, to be paid to post about like their shows or a particular thing. Yeah. And so then when you, when you think about, and I love girls five ever, and I'm so happy to do press for it because I want people to, I really do want people to watch it. But when you think about the fact that like another network would pay me to essentially do exactly. what I've, I mean, what I've been doing tenfold for free, not, and it, it's like, people are like, it's not free. It's part of your job. It's like, well, the job is hard too. So I'm getting paid for the job. And then months later, hundred percent, it just seems, it's a little bit. Yeah, wonky, it is. But it's it's a like, little, at this point, mm -hmm. we basically don't even have healthcare. So I mean, add it to the know. list. Add it to the list. I'm not going to add it. To the, like no one's adding it to the list. Yeah, no one's exactly. going to feel sorry for me about doing free press, but, or any actor for doing free publicity. But like, that was part of, in part, why I wanted to do my own talk show was just um, to like give people promoting things, to give them like a fun time while yeah. they were doing it. Yeah. Which I you, you like, totally achieved that. Thanks. I also just felt like no show ever was a late night show that I particularly wanted to watch at this point. And I wanted that. I wanted that. I don't know. So then you went on, I mean, you're, you're, you're busy and I always find it, well, you're busy and you're busy, but you started a podcast and I'm like, she has a lot of things that she has on her plate. What made you want to start a podcast? Well, the podcast is sort of interesting because I, uh, Casey and I, after Busy Tonight was canceled, Casey St. Anne, she was my showrunner, and I 
started working. Well, first of all, we thought we were going to move busy tonight to another home. Mm -hmm. Um, and we were just taking, and we were taking meetings and doing things. And I just had this, like, I had this feeling like what we needed to be doing was figuring out a way to be doing it ourselves in 100%. some form. And so we started like formulating this thing, this idea. And then what ended up happening was we had all of these meetings with like financial money people, whatever. Oh, and while we we're building this, we had sold a podcast, like almost like a startup to go with us trying to like relaunch the show in this way. It was just going to be like this all encompassing thing. Yeah, 360. And then, yeah. Totally. And then we were like getting there and we were almost getting our like financing. And we had this plan like being like for South by Southwest, like being held and our like big meeting with the money people was um scheduled for yeah i think it was like march it was march 17 2020 in new york um the meeting did not happen everything went away everything disappeared mm -hmm. i disappeared into first grade teaching first grade know, and trying to keep my preteen safe online and sane um and trying to keep myself sane and i just was like i don't even i can't even think about it and the podcast company we had recorded hours and hours of this like podcast the podcast company was like what do you want to do and i was like well throw it all away like this doesn't fucking mean anything and it's stupid like it's not going to make sense um and then i think sometime in june i was chatting with shantira jackson who was a writer on busy tonight and she's also a stand-up and a writer and performer in her own right outside of busy tonight but i was chatting with her and i was like you know do you want to do a podcast with me and casey about like unexpected life turns <laughs> pivots and she's like yeah i could be down to do that i was like okay i think we have to do like 30 episodes for this company like literally i was like i think i signed this contract and i gotta do it so do you want to do it so we ended up just changing the whole thing making it about a pivot at, talking to some people about like times in their lives when you know they thought a thing was going to go one way it went yeah. the other way and it was also i think i think it was especially in that moment like just everyone no matter where they were at was being asked to make some sort of a pivot whether it was 100 you know, like long-held beliefs systems of oppression that have been <laughs> held up <laughs> beliefs that they had nothing to do with the those systems um you know or like actually moving across country or people were like moving back sure. with their families or people yeah. were getting laid off anyway so that's what the podcast started then about and here we are yeah it's amazing for anyone who's listening it's called busy phillips is doing her best and uh it's a great show she's had people on like glennon doyle but also tina fey and sarah Bareilles, which yeah. um will lead us into talking about your tv show but um i love the podcast and again i just think it's extremely um it's extremely indicative of who you are where like I said before, you're willing to sort of like pull back the curtain and there's never this prescriptive advice with you. Like come to, come around children. Let me tell you what it is that you need to do. It's more like, okay, well, I'm on this journey with you. I'm trying to figure it out. And let's face it, that takes courage. Most people would rather just hold it up. Like as if it's all whatever they want it to look like it is. And that never really works. I don't know why people keep choosing that path, but most people do, but your path is more like, yeah, hot mess.com. Like, let's, let's do it. You know, it's just like, like life is yeah. life. Life is life. I think life is, is messy. You know, I just also think that 
one of the most valuable lessons I learned as an adult, like a real adult, is that asking questions is not a negative thing. And like being curious and critically thinking about things is not, is not bad. Like you think that you have all the answers. I'm going to tell you, you definitely do not like it's just, it, it does boggle my mind when people aren't open to the possibilities of, well, what if, what if another thing is true? And I think it's really interesting right now. We're definitely have been asked in this time, many, many people have been asked to like double down on their beliefs and and that and not allowing any room for anything else to get in or permeate and you know it's it's not a great place to live and certainly a lot doesn't get accomplished from that place yeah so it's not super beneficial no when you're looking like at a culture <laughs> yeah i think people inherently want certainty because people are always just trying to protect themselves. And so it's like, it's amazing I'm, how much we will suffer because we will be unwilling to move from whatever feels certain, even when it's right. literally killing you and right. the world around you, which is so many things. And I actually wanted to ask you on a slightly different take, but related to who you are, my audience of women and men, there's a, there's a few good men in here too, but I, I meet so many amazing human beings. Let's put it that way, who uh, they listen to the show and they are, they are so filled with goodness and light and ideas, but the amount of fear and shame and guilt, the amount of perfectionism, the amount of, I, I could never do it. I could never put up a podcast or write a blog post or be myself, whatever that is, because there's a, there's a big old thing called rejection, right? And there's a big old thing called, I know, I know how I've built survival strategies to like, at least mm -hmm. survive here. And so they don't do this thing that, that they want to do. And you, you are someone who you, to me, at least, and we, we've been talking about it, um, you continue to, at least at what I can see is, is you do show up as yourself. And as you said before, and you, you got to that, that place where you lost that grip a little bit and then went back to like, you know what, if people don't like it, it's, it's, it's just going to have to be okay with me. Right. So what would you say to people who are listening right now, who to use your word or feel trapped in their own fear of rejection, or I could never do that unless I was already perfect, or I could never do that unless I already had the permission slip or the stamp of approval from someone else. And therefore I'm literally stuck because I'm so afraid of doing something not perfect or not being liked. I think that that is what so much of this, at least what I hear comes down to. Well, <clears throat> it's interesting because I, like I was saying, like you see when, once you become a parent, like humans become very clear if you're observant and if you spend any time mm -hmm. with them. Yeah. Some people don't guys, some people, <laughs> some people, some people become parents and then just don't <laughs> hand yes. it over. <laughs> yeah. Um, but here's what I think, I think might be a thing that some people are able to access a little bit easier than others, but it's just really simple. It's try you like try trying. You have to try, you have to try and you have to try hard. You have to try. And if you don't, like uh, nothing's gonna happen ever, right? Mm -hmm. And all that fear and all that stuff, of course, it's telling you not to try the thing, obviously, we know that. But when you see it in a kid, like the resilience of 
being, you know, even when they're really little, like being like not invited into play and it's sad and crying and they, whatever. And then they're just like the next day going to go ask again. And I know that you get to a point where you're like, yeah, I'm 35. I'm fucking sick of asking. I get it. But the deal is as long as you're alive, you got to try. And it's truly like the only important thing that you can do as a creative, as a person, you got to try to make the world a little bit better. You got to try to understand. You got to try to be a decent human. You got to try to eat pretty healthily. You know, you got to try to be a good parent. You have to try. So that's, I mean, like, I don't know. That's, it's so, I know it sounds so stupid. It's it's not, it's so good. It's just like everything. It's so good. It reminds me, we went to the Hollywood Bowl to see back when you can go there um, to see Willy Wonka and the Chocolate Factory. And we took my kids and I remember watching it with them. So I was thinking about their perspective and the scene that I realized is my favorite scene. The scene that I realized for me is the whole movie is when he's walking down the street and he already thinks that all five tickets are gone. And then he hears that one is still remaining and he sees a silver coin in this like side of the street, little graded thing. And he looks at the candy store and he knows that if he spends this money, A, his family desperately needs it. B, he's already broken his heart because he's tried it and he's failed. And he makes this decision to like go back in the store. And then he's like, I'd like to buy another Wonka bar. And then they hand it to him. And he's, you know, they're like, you know, of course the newsman knows who he is. Everybody in a movie, the town, everyone knows he's like, run straight home, Charlie. And I started to cry. And I realized in that moment, that's the moment. I want my kids to get that moment. Like Mm -hmm. it wasn't like, oh, and then this happened to him. It happened to him. It's like that, that moment being willing to get up to bat. I have a friend whose wife passed away, a friend of mine. She was someone that I had known. And I met her husband. Anyway, she passed away of cancer. And two years later, he got married. And at that wedding, we were sobbing. Like he got up to bat again, his heart has been destroyed. He got up to bat again. So Mm -hmm. I think that what you just said is actually not, I mean, you knew that it wasn't stupid, but you said, but it's not, but it's not even trite. It's important. It's the whole thing. It's, It's it takes courage to be like, I'm doing it again. Even if it turns out I'm going to be willing to risk that I actually do want this thing and it's, it might hurt. And so what I'm still doing it again. It's tough, especially now, I think for people to be, to want to keep trying, I get like, I really get it. And I think that that, I mean, above all else in the last year and a half, I think that has been like the collective thing we've been grappling with. It's like, why do we keep trying? You get fatigued. Yeah. Fatigued because also there's so many, there are so many things that you feel like you're up against and so many things that need trying, Yeah, (laughs) but it needs you to show up and try. And, and so then you're just like, well, I can't, I can't do all this. I don't know how to do this. Um, but, you know, watching the experiences of my older kid and, and, and my little one too, but like just how, yeah, like getting their heart broken and then just continuing to try mm-hmm. has been kind of, yeah, it's been really illuminating for me. And I love it because it would be, you know, so much more um, impressive when someone comes along and says, Oh no, it's not try. Here's the formula. It's six things. And there's an acronym and blah, blah, blah. It's actually so much more, um, achievable when you break it down to that. Right. And it's like, where in your life are you making a choice to stop trying when like, as long as you're here in this world, there really isn't a choice to not because otherwise it all sort of falls apart. Um, people who stop trying are miserable. Yeah. 
because they've just that's accepted like, this. It is. Yeah. Yeah. So another thing that you're doing, which if anyone's feeling miserable, I'm going to say something that I don't usually say because it's <laughs> maybe illegal to say that you can guarantee results. Oh, if you're feeling miserable or meh or, or even if you're feeling great and you want to sustain that, you have to watch, if you're listening, you have to watch Girls 5 Eva because it's not normal how much fun it is to watch it. Can you tell us how this project came about and how you got the yummy role and how much fun it was to shoot it? Oh my God. Well, so many questions and I have all the answers for you. Um, first of all, the show is on Peacock, which is the NBC Universal streaming service. So if people don't know how to get it, I don't really know how to tell you, except I'm pretty sure you can Google how to. I got it. I first okay. got it when I heard Punky Brewster was coming back. Yes. Um, Saved by the Bell was on it. The <laughs> Saved by the Bell reboot. So you can get it on your phone and you can also get it on your TV. Yeah. yeah. It's con- like some people, I some people have just had a lot of thoughts and feelings about how to get Peacock. And I'm like, I don't, guys, I don't it's know. It's not hard to I, get. It was on my Apple TV. I just looked it up on it's my so Apple so easy TV to get. It. Yeah. It's a click away. Um, But anyway, so uh peacock so uh so yeah i mean i sort of wasn't really on the market for acting jobs like i get sent stuff every once in a while that that are that's being offered to me you know i have friends that know that if they're doing a thing and i would love to work with them and other than that i'm not like i'm not really i don't know i wasn't just i wasn't really on the lookout plus like i said casey and i had been working on this whole thing like my friend, uh, my friend uh, Charles um, Rogers and um, Sarah Violet Bliss from uh, Search Party asked me to come do an episode of the season before the pandemic. You know, like I was super excited to go do that show because I that's like one of my favorite shows. I love watching it, and the part was so silly and it was fun. But other than that, I'm not like in the market necessarily. But uh, was doing the podcast. We had like just a whole series of events in our life as everyone did in like late summer, 2020, early fall, like that led us to leaving LA for what we thought was going to be three weeks. And we came to New York for three weeks because the fires in LA were really bad and I couldn't breathe and my older kid has asthma and it was, just, it was also just a really, you were there. Yeah. We also left. You, know, you did. Yeah. Mm-hmm. It was horrible. Like it was yeah. just it really, was... it. and then on the sort of like tail end of the shutdown and what we'd been going through. I mean, it was just like a lot. And I, we had to get out. I had to get out. I felt like, I don't even know. Plus the election was looming. I don't know how to describe it other than I was like having a very, yeah, very strong, like fight or flight. There was like thing. a dark web, like right yes. there. I felt that it too. It really was in, in Los Angeles. And I, 100%. I was like, I can't get sucked. I gotta get, I gotta get out. We gotta get out. We like decided on <laughs> the Friday of the fires and like Sunday morning, we're on a flight with like yeah. the dog and the kids yeah. and the pandemic. And we were like, fuck it. And we, <laughs> we flew to New York. So we were in New York and Tina Fey texted me. Well, first, yeah, Tina Fey texted me. Why are you here? Why are you in New York? I saw on your Instagram, you're on New York. Why are you in New York? I was like, I am, Tina, it's a long story. I really honestly don't even know why I'm here, but we are. And my kids are doing Zoom school anyway, so it doesn't even matter. And we're just here. And then she's like, okay, well, will you call me? Can you jump on the phone tomorrow? I want to talk to you about something. Or a weird, I have a weird work question for you. And I was like, okay. And the next day she texted me in the morning, like, what time do you think you could talk? And I was like, oh, call me at this time. <laughs> Which I didn't realize I had scheduled my podcast at that time with Casey. I was recording my podcast. So she called and left me a message. And then as things happen, I got after my podcast, something else happened and then something and my kids and da, 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 da. So next thing you know, it's like 830 at night, we had gotten food delivered, of course, 
and they had forgotten tortillas and I was just like grumpy <laughs> about the fact I needed tortillas with my food like I was just like I can't I hate eating in like I'm so annoyed like everything I have to go get tortillas it became a whole thing I stomped out to get tortillas and like was waiting for the tortillas on the corner like and was scrolling on my phone and I was like oh no Tina I never called her back and I totally flaked on this and so I texted her hey I'm so sorry I lost track of today and she's like great are you are you available right now I was like yes and she's like so listen we have this show and uh you know we're basically gonna start shooting in a couple weeks and it's eight episodes on peacock and it's about a 90s girl group who tries to make a comeback it's it's in, so you it's beyond it was, it's like it's written for you i don't even I, get it well and she said she was like you know meredith who i had worked with a little bit on kimmy schmidt you know meredith had always sort of thought of you for this part and i you know i always thought you'd be great for this part too i know you sang um but you know you were in la and i wasn't ever going to ask you to move to New York, especially with your kids and they're in school there. I know what that is. So I wasn't even ever going to bring it up, but you're here. Do you want to just stay and do this show? Yeah. Oh, it was, it was a real, like it's the best fall down on the ground. The best could have gone anywhere. We came to New uh, York. I don't know. And, uh, and that was like, that was it, man. Like I was, I love it, was it so crazy. it is so good. It is so yeah. meant to be that it was already in the stars. Like you were going to play the part. That's why you got on the flight. That's why it all worked out. So how fun is it to shoot that? I mean, you guys look like you are in actual heaven, actual heaven. The entire, yeah. every line is funny. How fun to like say things that you love saying. I mean, it's, it's, it's fantastic. It is a dream job. It, it was a dream job from that phone call from the just best. how it even came together until the very last frame of watching the show. Uh, you know, and what's I, it like working with Sarah Bareilles? Well, she's a dream. Um, and she was so sweet because she had done waitress on Broadway, obviously, but she'd never acted I know. In, in a TV show before. I mean, she'd produced that show. Sing Off? Little Voice. No. It oh, Little Voice. Right, right. She was yeah. on the Sing Off. Yeah, but she produced Little Voice. That's right. Yeah, that's like she a story a of her kind of, right? Yeah. And she was a producer on that show and she was like, she was pretty involved in it, but she wasn't, you know, an actor. And I think, you know, coming into it, I do think she was, she was nervous that, you know, what, what am I doing? And like the day we had our hair and makeup tests, she was like, so can I just ask you like, what, what happens? Like, what's going to happen? Can you just walk me through what's going to happen? So um, cute. No, it was great because also I was able to go to her and say, okay, so with this four part harmony, you walk me through what's going to happen here. <laughs> how am I, uh, how am I going to hit that note? How am I going to get that note? How do am I going to know that note? How are we recording that? Is that in real life, like real time? What's happening? Oh my God, it's so um, good. What do you think is going to come from this? Because it's it's so magical. Like, I feel like it needs to go on forever or like become oh like a movie or 15 other things. Do you, do you think that there's other things that will come from it? I don't know. I'm so happy to be able to know that we're going to go back and do a second season. I'm like so thrilled because I really also, oh, you know, so I read the script and obviously loved summer and then I had to like figure out what like who like who's all of that stuff is so fun for me you know figuring out who she is and oh my God, what she looks so like funny. and what the what her life is and what her her voice and her all of her things I had a it was the most fun I've ever had because it was also like part of the freedom for me with that part was just that as we've discussed i don't really care about acting in the future so i was a little bit like i can just go yeah. for it because i'm not trying to be a thing for someone else like i'm only trying to have Meredith and Tina 
and Jeff and myself like find this funny and I love joyful. that. So, and truthful, you know, I and love so that. I was just like, it was, I was just, tr it was the most like free, freest experience I've ever had on television. It's honestly just, it's the most delicious thing to, to watch. And I think that's a great place to leave this conversation because when it comes down to it, you are, are saying something that's actually rare. I feel like we all do this thing where it's like, I'll be happy when I achieve this thing. Then you get that goal. Then you move the goalpost. Totally. And then once in a while you hear people say like, oh, I'm doing this because in this moment, this thing actually is fun. And that's why I'm doing it because more than the goal of winning this Emmy or this Oscar or whatever it is and making this money or having the second home, the goal is like, I want to actually like my life. And it's such a cool story arc because you said about whatever, 32 minutes ago, like I was miserable. Like I didn't like yeah. any of it. And you got yourself out of that dance with yourself yes. to give yourself permission to free yourself of this thing called what other people want of me versus, oh yeah, it's my day. It's my sandwich. It's my life. What then? Right. And so yeah. I think that that is like the most inspiring thing for people to hear. And Thanks. it was just so fun to talk to you. Thanks. Thanks so much. Well, so tell true. us, tell <laughs> us. Yes, it is. I am great to talk to. That's what she's saying. Um, tell us where we can find your things. The show okay. we already know is on Peacock, but tell us more and tell us okay. about anything else. The book that came out a couple of years ago, but it's still great the podcast, the Instagram, all the things. Um, podcast is wherever you find podcasts. <laughs> and it's called Busy Phillips is doing her best. And um, yeah, we have some great episodes. I actually just realized we have a new episode up today that I did not post about yet. I'm bad at it. I handle my own social media. I have nobody. Why is that me. happening? Why are you? I, why? That's because not. Because I don't. I just, no, it's okay. You it's are okay. just taking on just, the world. I'll I handle just, it. I know I have 17,000 DMs a second, but I got this. I got it. I would just prefer, I know that people use like companies and stuff, but especially because it's just like always been my personal account. How would you I'm ever like, do that when you can be in never. it 24 seven? Of course. I just, well, I just don't. Yeah. But, but it keeps know, it authentic. You can tell that I it's do. you. That's well, the thing. But also I don't feel just, let's be real, obviously. I don't feel pressure to post. <laughs> like, I, but I'm you're clearly, not, you're not. No, I clearly I'm not like posting content all the time. Nobody's like, tax go dollars go to whether you post or not. Like you owe nobody so nothing. You can that's post right. whatever. But yeah. that's what I'm saying. Like, I think people need to relieve themselves of that idea. Like you don't yeah. have to continually right. <laughs> post things. Like sometimes I, People don't believe this. They're like, no, you don't. I was like, yeah, dude, look at it. Sometimes I go like two days. I don't put up anything new on Instagram. I don't give a fuck if I fall off of some people's feed. Okay. If that, when they're interested again, they'll find me. Correct. Like it's fine. Um, I'm not beholden to the gram, uh, in that way, but so busy Phillips is doing her best is my podcast. And, um, and then, yeah, my book is, this will only hurt a little it's available in paperback and hardcover you can probably find it on sale somewhere um i we recommend will... the audiobook oh it's so good we will put I links read it to... yeah and that's why i said it's such a treat when somebody like you actually reads the book because it's like a whole experience um and i i know that people can get that book like and there's audible ways that you sure. can get it for like nothing um go get it we will put links to everything in the show notes and we'll do swipe ups to everything um you look at me just like throwing the mic and hitting your microphone all over the place and yeah and then i'm on instagram it's just my name but um my last name is p-h-i-l-i-p-p-s and a lot of people spell it incorrectly and then they're mm -hmm. confused i don't know just That's say it. f those people just be like I, I like you or i don't and if you can't take the time to spell it correctly then then there's none of this for you that's it just you, draw a line in I, the sand can i tell you when we we took 
every submission for writers for busy tonight like i was adamant about that like you want to submit you don't have representation so nice reach out to casey on twitter she'll get you you know here's the address to we gave out like the address so to my nice. managers my manager at the time like her company like i was yeah, like yeah but that's so nice submit and we read every single one but the people that spelled my name incorrectly i was like sorry you can't i you can't you can't you apply can't for a job where you don't spend to... if you don't know how to spell my name details no. this is the details i that's hear not, that's not entirely true it there was one person who we definitely interviewed who did spell my name incorrectly I'm going to hold it against things, you, but I do feel like it was indicative. You know what I mean? Like, absolutely. I mean, you can't take a second to just look, the woman's giving you an opportunity for God's sakes. Um, busy. You are a delight. And, um, okay. I already obviously really liked you, but now I like love you. I just am Aww. like, cause you know what it is. Let me just tell you what it is before I let you go. Tell me what it there is. are people who have they have all the things you're already going to find them fun, right? Like, you know, I get to interview Harry Connick and Matthew McConaughey. They don't have to, they're, I like them. I'm, I'm interested. I'm attracted to them. It's fine. But then there are people <laughs> who go out of their way to be like, to talk to you like you're a somebody and like, you just go, they didn't have to do that. Like I was already like, I've already bought the store. So thank Aww. you for just being so cool. People are going to like, love you now well, even you more. Are, like also though you are a somebody like you're a person in the world dude like Thanks. you know what i mean i am a somebody like, you are but that's like i mean okay whatever this, pen this, that is, I have. this doesn't have to be only on a somebody could have a pen like this because i love that pen i have three daughters so i have mm. office supplies but they don't last and so i i needed a pen today and this is all i could find i love it and only a someone would would even show you that this is what i've been writing I, with and these are my I awesome agree. notes I love okay. It. Well, you're the best and Thank I'm going to rewatch all of the things that you've done. Cause it's fun to do that again, but thank you. And we will put this out and people will love it. And if I can support you in any way, then that's a done deal. Thanks Kathy. I really appreciate it. You're awesome. Bye. <laughs>